title I've been assigned is called Trust. Now, I've been noodling on that subject for, uh, it seems like, weeks. But sometimes when I get on a theme, I can write my comments very quickly, and they are very simple, and I got, I got a bunch of stories, and they work good. And sometimes when you get on a subject, you say, boy, this is a difficult thing, and it's one of those that hasn't come easy for me to talk about. My first reaction in this subject of trust is that what's to talk about? All of us are in this room because we trusted each other, and if we didn't trust this thing, we wouldn't be here. So it's the mere, your mere presence demonstrates your trust. On the other hand, the question is, does a company trust you? You can turn that one both ways, can't you? Since trust has to be uh, a two-way street. If I look at all of the aspects of uh, trust uh, and our trusting you, then I'm going to wait for Steve and Dick to get up a little bit later and talk to you about how we not only trust you, but how we have invested in excess of a billion dollars to demonstrate that trust on our investments in the last few years to confirm and to strengthen and to move forward with this business. So I want to assure you of our trust in you. And that's why in all of the thinking of this company, it's always of how do we do these things together. Now, if you get beyond that problem, none of the other things are a problem at all. Because it is normal human thinking. Say, what's this going to do to me? How's this going to hurt me? What are they trying to get away with? Now, that's a, a normal thought process of people who live in a state of fear. But we didn't get here by being fearful. We got here by being courageous and by being willing to move on forward and take our chances. For most of us in this room, when we started, we came with little or nothing. I know some of you have degrees, some of you had good jobs, but from an investment standpoint or from a personal business standpoint, we had little or nothing. Jay and I had had a couple of successful businesses, but we still had never had any big business. You know, we had a business that employed a dozen people uh, in our flying school days. So our experience, like for many of you, was very small and very limited. And so when you are in that, and I was just thinking about how when Jay and I started, we were willing to try anything because we had no fear of loss because we had nothing to lose. I used to say that about new distributors who would go out and say dumb things when they tried to recruit somebody. And we'd say, well, if you don't do it right, we're going to push you out of the business. And they'd say, who cares? They don't have any. Now, after a while, when I get a business going, then I'll worry about that, see? But right now, you have nothing to take away from me because I have nothing. And there are always great numbers of our distributors who are in that state who have nothing to lose. And therefore, they don't worry about ethics or how we do it or what the image is because they just they are trying to get something going, and therefore almost anything goes. Now, it probably can be said for all of us to some extent as we went through that. You know, when Jay and I were in the aviation business, which was our, our first real business following World War II, we had never flown an airplane, either one of us. But we're running a flying school. So we had to learn everything, just like you had to learn everything in this business. When we started in the Neutralite business 50 years ago, we had never known of or done anything just like you in the multi-level field. In fact, there was no business like this. Amway was the only so what we call today a multi-level business. We just call ourselves a direct sales company. The name multi-level had not been invented. So we just went out and took a chance at it. Therefore, the fear of loss doesn't slow us up because all we had was gain, possible gain. 
Now, we could have stayed flat. But therefore, the spirit of adventure and willing to try and do new things stands before you. The world stands before you. And you're young and say, why not? But as you get a little older and you develop some values and you develop some cash and you develop some investments and houses and family, and now you make some money, something happens suddenly in your mind. And that's probably where many of us are at in this room. Because now you come down and say, oh, I don't rock the cradle. I don't want to lose what I got. And we all say, amen. We all agree with that. On the other hand, if we lose all of our fear, I mean, all of our willingness to take a chance, then we're probably going to lose what we have. Because then we'll be so focused on preserving that we will forget the excitement and joy of growing. Somebody said to me when I came, he said, don't rock the boat, you know. You know, business isn't bad. Don't fix what isn't broke. I think that's good advice. But the fact of the matter is our business is broke. And it needs some fixing. And we can't just say everything's okay. Because everything's not okay. Now, when I look at the faith and trust in the future, let me say, are we content with a nice little hang on to our six billion dollar a year business? That's not a bad little thing. It's a pretty big little thing. So the attitude of, let's say, Jay and myself should be, just say, hang on. Hang on. We can ride this a few more years. We'll see what we can make. And after that, we'll be dead anyway. Who cares? Well, it's all right. It's a normal thought process. But that isn't where we're at at all, because we have trust in you. But more than that, we live in a world of responsibility towards you. Now, as a Christian, you see, my background in, in looking at the Bible, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That means you live in a framework of trust, that God is in command and that all is well and that everything will work out as he planned it. So you live in a field and an aura of trust. But when we began this business, it was built on trust in you. Because we bought a kit like you did. And therefore, that trust has to come down not only to whether I trust you or you trust me. It comes down to whether you are trustworthy to yourself. Are you a trustworthy person? Do you do what you will say you will do? Can you be honest with yourself? Now, I took the opposite of trust just for a little fun. Because to me, we trust you, I trust you. I, I really thought today, I said, I'd like to go right around the room and say to each one of you personally, I trust you. And say it right to your ear. I still might. My leg was good enough. And I would hope you could say back to me, I trust you. If we can put that behind us, then everything else we're going to talk about in the next couple of days will just be, how do we reach our potential? And who knows how big our potential is? We talk about 10 billion, but, I, you know, if we're going to get out of the mood of just trying to hang on and preserve what we got, then we're not going to see 10 billion. But why shouldn't we see 20 billion? We are the largest, most powerful, direct marketing force in the world. Now, we've lost our way a little bit, but by re-harnessing and reworking that a little bit, there is no question about the power that lies within this organization. Now, the thing that's going to keep us from doing some of that is fear. The opposite of trust is fear. I trust you. Or am I afraid of you? Well, let's assume we just trust each other, and then let's take our fears and look at them a moment and see if we can kind of put them away. And they, are, they won't take long, and it isn't complicated. 
I've talked to you about number one fear, fear of loss. Therefore, I'm unwilling to try anything new because it might be worse than what I have. Well, that's possible. But our goal, of course, is to try to make sure we don't screw up what we have and add to it. We think that's quite doable. But that means you've got to accept a little bit of that fear. Say, we're going to try a new road. I don't know where it's going to lead us. Now, you know, when we started, we sold bomb shelters. Some of you don't remember those days. Those are the good old days. We sold shelters that six people could live in that you could bury in your yard outside your house. Now, those were the days when we were fearful of a bomb attack from Russia. And so we sold bomb shelters. We were trying to sell anything. We weren't afraid of trying new things. It didn't work very well. We, we buried a few of them, but 10 years later, I dug the one out of my backyard and took it away. I don't know if Jay still got his or not. Does he bet? Nan, Nan says, yeah. I think he's saving it for an old time's sake or something. Anyway, uh, I got rid of mine. But that was another adventure. But like, you see, yeah, we put some money in it. Did you make any money at it? No, it all turned out to be a loss, but it was a part of the process of arriving at the product lines that we have today and what we know works. For a while, we sold electric generators that you put on your car that would give you 110 volts or 220 volt power. So that if the electricity went out, you could run your car and get enough power out of that to plug in your freezer, for example, or keep your furnace going to keep a little heat in your house temporarily. Now that shows you the state of mind of the American people at that time, because we lived in an atmosphere of fear of what might happen. America did not grow dramatically during that time period because they lived under an umbrella of fear. And that's what you and I have to look at. Are we afraid to try some new approaches to our Amway business, add-ons we trust, to move us to where we have to be? So get used to that fear of loss. Enjoy it. Oftentimes, it's like making a speech. They say, if you don't get a little nervous before making it, you probably won't be very good. You've got to have a little anxiety. And so it is as we embark on trying new things, there's a little bit of a fear that goes with that. But that's the only way you get through moving to higher ground. I put another one down called the fear of change. Because we're all a little bit afraid of change. Oh, you're not going to change the plan. Well, I hope so. Because we've been changing the plan ever since it started. When we started in this business, we had a basic discount. We had the refund schedule. We had 3%. And we had an emerald bonus at one quarter of 1%. That was the plan. We thought it was fabulous. I think there are about 10 other income opportunities today in our business over what we had at that time. So the plan keeps changing, and we must keep changing. Now, as we talk about Quickstar and moving on to the internet, that's going to be a change. That's going to provide people a new alternative way to get Amway products. It's all linked back to you. Credits go back to you. So it isn't a plan where we said, well, we're going to make a change and cut them out. We're going to make a change and offer direct service and cut everybody in. So it's kind of a change that you don't have to be afraid of because what it does is expand your opportunity. But it is a change. And we'll be doing a lot of changes as we work at ways to reward and incentivize people. The third one I put down is fear of the company. Well, we've been around for 40 years. Uh, if you have some time in which uh, we violated the trust with you, 
failed to pay something that we were supposed to pay you, uh, you ought to come and talk to me. But you know, finally, it's sort of like with your kids, you know, when you're 40 years old and your children are grown, you say, they ought to trust me by now. And that's sort of where I get at, you know, it's 40 years, you ought to trust us by now, you know. In 40 years, we haven't tried to do anything to go around you or undermine you or take something from you. Everything we've done for 40 years is to attempt to enrich you. So you don't have to be afraid of us. The fourth point, then, is should we be afraid of you? There are days when I think maybe I should. Some of you don't even admit you're an Amway. I mean, why should I be worried about how you get along in Amway when you don't even admit you're in Amway? No, that's kind of hard. Say, what are you in? Oh, I'm an XYZ deal. I'm in this deal. Is it you in Amway? Amway? What's that? Uh, so, uh, can I trust you? Are you really an Amway? Well, I understand the reasons you need to have the identity of your own. I think that's important. But when we sit back and our outside advisors look at us and talk to us about building the Amway image, that's got to begin by getting the people in this room to be proud of Amway and not hide from being an Amway. Can you build your future on people who don't even want to admit they're associated with you? I think so, because I understand the rationale for it. But it doesn't make it all that easy. It does cause a little question. I sometimes have to ask you what business you're in, and that your goals, as we sit here in the next couple of days, are to see what we can do together to help the Amway business. It doesn't mean what we do here should hurt the other things you're doing that surround it. But while we're here, try and focus on what is good or bad for the Amway business. Because if the Amway business does well, then you, of course, are all. If the Amway business doesn't do well, your other businesses won't do so well either in the long run. I have a fear of missing the next great big growth in this business. I have, I have, I'd be afraid of that. In fact, I get a little mad when I hear other multi-level companies that are growing faster than we are while we're stagnant. That scares me. So I got to use that fear to drive us, like under good competitive programs, to overcome it. So let's just replace our fears with faith in God, trust in one another, and a love for each other and for the millions of people in the world who are seeking what we have found. Everyone in this room has found something. And there isn't a person in the world, in the main now, who wouldn't trade places with you. Virtually everybody. I know there are a bunch of other successful people in the world who wouldn't. But if you look at the masses of people in the world, they would trade places with you tomorrow. And the only thing that keeps them from trying is fear. It's the fear of loss on their part. When people say to me, oh, I can't sell, or I don't think I can do that, they are saying to me is, I'd get in, but I'm afraid I can't do it. If I thought I could do it, I would do it, of course. But I'm not sure I can do it, so therefore I'm not going to try to do it. And so you are working with that fear every day as you try and help people overcome their fear of their own inabilities. Now, if I go back, that's what us old guys like to do. We go back and look where we were 40 years ago when we started. And not just Amway, but look where the world was 40 years ago. 
the cars we were driving. You know, when Amway began, the first jet airplane began to fly. There were no jets before that. We would never have thought, and in the early days of Amway, we couldn't even think of a worldwide organization, because there was no real way to be in touch with the world. The transportation of moving people or product from one side of the world was cumbersome and expensive and very long. And so in the last 40 years has come on the jet age, which permits you and us to have a day's notice and we're all here or there or wherever we want to be in the world. That's happened in the last 40 years. 40 years ago, there were no computers. IBM had put out their first big computer about 40 years ago. And the head of IBM said that he thought the market for big computers would be about four of them. They were terribly expensive. And he figured only about four companies could afford it, and those are about all the uses he saw for it. Little did he know. Because he was lacking confidence in the future of where it could go. And today, you not only travel the world quite comfortably, you carry your computer right with you and you put it on your lap and you bring up data. I was looking at my little computer. I, my 73rd birthday, they gave me a computer. He said, it's time you learned how to get on the internet and find the Amway site. And so I finally got on the internet and I even have answered a couple of email messages. That shows you what progress I'm making. So we're going to have to get with it. Progress. I don't. They got one. Ask Helen what it is. Helen really does most of it for me, but I, I'm pecking away. Uh, I don't, quite frankly, I don't know what my address is, but I ignore those most of the time. Uh, once in a while, I open it up, see what's in there. The, the thing to me about the computer is the amazing thing. I said to Helen, I said, where are all these messages called? Where are they hiding? I mean, where's the stack of paper? Someplace these things have got to be hiding in here. I said, are they sitting on a big computer in Ada that we reach over there and pull down a piece of data? She said, no, you load it. It's right in this little box. It's all right here. You push up all this stuff. It's all right in your lap. Wow. You see, that turns me from over being overwhelmed with what's going on around us, but with being amazed at how great God is. You know, you think of if a man could design this little piece of equipment, then how awesome God is who could make a man who could come up with a piece of thing like that. I mean, I say something, oh, you're awesome. Helen says, no, I don't use that. She says, God is awesome. We are all significant human beings in his kingdom, but God is awesome. And the power he's placed within all of us is, gives us awesome power that it comes from God. That awesomeness is what is causing the world to change so fast because people are so bright and so smart. I look at you in this room and I say, look at the power in this room. Look at the youth in this room. Look at the energy in this room. Now, you're all pretty young, generally speaking now. There's a few cacklers who are a little older. You missed that, huh? No, all right, I don't want you to miss that line, sweetie. But you are all young. And what you come to realize is one of the blessings God gives you is energy. You know, sometimes we talk about how smart we are and how good we are and how we made the right decisions. But I become overwhelmed at how God gives some people such tremendous energy. You know, some people just don't have that kind of power or energy. 
And that is a true gift from God. And because we have harnessed that energy, we have been able to do great things. We are not here to talk about how poorly we've done in the last 40 years. We're here to celebrate how far we've come in the last 40 years. And somebody said to me, well, you're down about a billion dollars. I said, shoot, I never thought I'd be at six billion, so what's the problem? If I hadn't been to seven, I would have thought six was terrific. It's all relative, isn't it, sometimes? But since I know we can get to six, then I know we can get to ten, and I know we can go beyond that, because the power, the awesome power of God has been entrusted to you and to me. And so we move forward trusting each other with confidence waving the flag of hope you know i look at our amway business even though we've been through wars and tensions and all these things we still are the force that brings hope to people as we move around the world i know we got our enemies and we got our problems but there is no greater, more powerful force of people in the world and the people in this room offering the Amway opportunity night after night to people. I know a lot of them don't take advantage of it. But that doesn't deter us, does it, from continuing to offer that hope to people. So my best wishes to all of you. It's really up to this, you young people and our next generation to take it on. Jay and I are just cheerleaders. We're applauding you. But the future of this business is in the hands of the next generation. And it's in your hands. And therefore, it's in good hands. We trust all of you. And we love you a lot. We lead by loving. We think we have good management technique, but we have to lead by love for people, and that comes out of trust. So we love you, and we trust you. And we're going to have a wonderful time together.